Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going? Thank you all for being here. Thank you for waiting for me for a minute. I was just trying to coordinate schedules with the husband who uh, was just streaming. And we might, if we're lucky, get the Crucible chat over here, which would be super fun. I don't think the Crucible chat's ever been brought over, so that would be great. Okay, so just getting warmed up a little bit. While we wait for that, um, like most things, this stream was inspired by Twitter. <laughs> um, we were getting into some back and forth on Twitter about female politicians. So I'm just going to kind of casually give my thoughts. Uh, I didn't do like any deep research uh, on this topic. I just wanted to kind of chat with you guys and um, give my off the cuff kind of thoughts, comments on the topic because... As you know, we have another woman running for president um, on the Republican side this time. So we are going to talk about this. We're going to talk about female politicians, female leadership, women running for president, all this sort of stuff. And I'm going to give you all my hot takes on that. So be sure while you're here, while we're waiting for a sec, um, for everybody to come into the stream, make sure that you like, you share, you subscribe. You can buy a channel membership if you'd like to support my humble little tiny YouTube channel uh, that, you know, I can only jump on a few times a month. I wish I had more time for it. That will come down the road. But right now we still have two kids at home. They have to be taken care of first. And of course, Andrew has to be taken care of as well. Um, so that's what I focus on. I focus on that. And of course, I'm trying to get two more books out this year, which is a really like big undertaking. So hopefully, hopefully I can handle all of that. So why do you have another live set for 1230? Uh, oh, does Andrew? I don't know. Andrew's going to do another stream later tonight, I know. So, oh, he sent you to the wrong stream? How is there two streams? I don't even know. Couldn't tell you. Um, my stream here doesn't show that. So. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, let's. OK, well, since people are trying to find their way over here, maybe we'll just wait a quick second. I don't know if people are coming. Darn. So oh, we were sent to your stream, but it wasn't this one. How do I have two streams? That's bizarre. I don't know. StreamYard's weird. Um, maybe we have like Maybe it got doubled somehow or something like that. But, you know, I'm I am just a woman trying to do tech stuff. So I'm sure we'll figure it out next time. I'm sure we'll figure out later. <laughs> I'm sure we'll figure it out later, whatever happened, however that got mixed up. 
But uh, welcome, everybody. If you've not been to my channel, I'm Rachel Wilson, also known as Andrew's wife or the Crucible's wife, as Not So Erudite likes to call me. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully people can just, you know, find their way over here. But it'll be a nice segue because Andrew just did a stream uh, with a lot of woman content, a lot of woman prattle on it, a lot of uh, hot takes from the women of the Internet. Um, was interesting, huh? Between Creatrix and Torsha and then Jasmine Jafar and uh, Dollar Store Mia Khalifa giving their hot takes, their big brain takes, you know, as e-girls. Very interesting. I did say in the chat that if I could, if I logged off forever meant that all those women also had to log off forever, I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh, I wish. I wish. Also, if me giving up my right to vote meant all women had to give up their right to vote, done in a second. No hesitation. Wouldn't even have to think about it. So, yeah. Okay, welcome, everybody. Some people are finding their way over here. That's good. That's good. I don't know what happened with the stream raid. I don't know why I didn't... I don't know where he sent you guys. I don't know what happened. We'll figure it out later. It's fine. It's fine. It's not so serious. I'm just doing a little stream today about, about women in politics. So you could see from the thumbnail, I had some, some women politicians that we all know. Um, oh, Dollar Store Mia Khalifa is, uh, what's her name? Jasmine Jafar and Farah. Farah is the, the chick that Andrew has debated a few times. So, yeah. Um, do I really feel like, you know, the world would be lost without their hot takes? Not really. Not really, I don't. So, <laughs> hey, Smoking Patriot, nice to see you. He just became a member. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for, um, you know, being here and listening to my woman prattle. I appreciate it. So, all right, now that people are starting to come in, I will, I will give it a start here. So, this happened, like this whole woman politician thing, I've been meaning to get to it for a while. I've been meaning to talk about it for a while. Um, and there was a conversation on Twitter about this where I said, I don't want any female politicians. I don't care if they have the best takes. I don't care if they're super talented. I don't care what their merits are. I'm against female politicians. And what happened, surprisingly, you would think, right, if I tweet that, you would assume that there would be a ton of people. Yes, it was about the Tulsi for VP thing. It's everybody wanting Tulsi for vice president. I will tell you why I'm against that and why I don't want that. Okay, so I tweeted this, that I don't want women in politics, regardless of their merits, right? She could be the smartest most gifted woman with the best leadership skills and she says all the right things and she has all the right takes. And I would still, I would still not want that. And why, right? So I tweeted this and you would think it would be a bunch of women who were upset. You'd think my replies would be filled with angry women saying, you know, oh, how could you? You don't even, you, you hate women. You're trying to be provocative on Twitter. That's not what happened. Surprisingly, what happened is I got a ton of men who were upset with this take. That's right. The men were angry, mostly. There's a few angry women, but there was a lot of men who were just giving me their takes about why they think Tulsi is good, or maybe they like Carrie Lake, or what about Margaret Thatcher, right? What about this woman or that woman who did something right? What about this woman or that woman who was good at stuff? And I don't feel like Twitter is the place to explain that. So I was like, okay, we're just going to do a live stream. We're just going to do a live stream so I can try to explain my perspective. Not saying I have all the answers. Not saying you have to listen to me. I'll just tell you my thought process, process on it and why I'm not a fan of women in politics, women in leadership positions. You guys might have already seen a stream I did a few months back with David Erhan talking about why I don't believe women should be clergy. This is going to be along those lines, but I'm going to try to, you guys already know I'm Orthodox. You already know I'm a Christian and that's my worldview, but I'm going to try to kind of separate that out and just give you uh, something more of a, I wouldn't say secular and I wouldn't say neutral, but I'm not going to beat you over the head with the religious aspect. I could, uh, Testing Tolerance just became a member. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. My humble, tiny little YouTube channel. Thanks you. 
Um, the reason the reason I'm against female politicians is not because I think women are stupid, uh, women aren't capable, women can't do things. It's not really that. Like you could sit here and talk about women uh, being less less good at this or men being more good at that. We could talk about the merits, but I think first we have to back up a little bit because we're talking about this American political paradigm, right? That most of us, well, all of us, we've grown up in it and we have a bunch of presuppositions about, yes, Jack, I know he rated the, I, didn't, I don't know why there's two lives. I don't know what happened. That could be my fault. I really don't know. I'm so sorry. So sorry. But but whoever's here now, you can listen to my woman prattle about female politicians. So we're we're in an American democratic paradigm, right? For a hundred years now, we have had universal suffrage democracy. Now that's not how the country was founded. Okay. We weren't founded as a universal suffrage democracy. We were founded as a limited suffrage representative republic two very different things. If you look at the broader view of history and the world and culture and how power dynamics have worked throughout history, it's a very new idea that we're going to have what we have now, which is a big popularity contest, right? Where a bunch of people raise their hand and say, I want to be president or I want to be senator or I want to be in the Congress. I want to participate in government as a leader right? That's pretty new. We usually historically had monarchies or we had limited suffrage republics. We had, you know, um, serfdoms. We had different types of structures of government, but it was not this, this universal suffrage. Everyone gets a say. Everyone gets a vote. This stuff is new. It's only a hundred years old. Okay. Prior to that, we didn't have such a thing. So first, we have to take into account the fact that we are dealing with a very new system. Even from the Americanist perspective, for the first 150 years or whatever, it was not open suffrage where everyone gets a vote. So that's the first thing you have to kind of think of in your mind is like when we're talking about should women be political leaders, right? Where we are now is this bizarre system where it's just a, a huge popularity contest. You even have a lot of people that want to get rid of the electoral college and just make it a pure straight democracy, just a total um, popularity contest where you have a bunch of candidates and whichever one people like the best, is that's who gets to run everything. So just taking that into account, do you think that's the best system? Like when you think it through. So we already know people's voting patterns and their habits and, and how easily they can be swayed by propaganda, by ads, by appearances, by completely meritless things, right? If you go back to like the Nixon-Kennedy election, uh, Nixon didn't do well because it was some of the first televised debates. And Kennedy was more handsome. He was tan. He didn't look as sweaty. Like he, they powdered him up before uh, they went on TV and he looked calm, cool, and collected. People just liked the way he looked better. Now, they've done a ton of research on what makes people vote. I mean, there's whole entire polling systems, organizations, uh, companies that all they do is study voter demographics and what makes someone vote for a candidate. And they found that, like, if you're short as a man, good luck to you. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough to get elected. If you're bald, for some reason, people associate baldness with like um, characteristics they don't necessarily like. So that can be a hit against you. Um, if you just based on things like looks, tone, everybody probably remembers Howard Dean several years ago. Maybe not. Maybe you're not as old as me. But Howard Dean, what was that, 12, 15, 16 years ago, something like that, when he was running as a Democrat, he just had that one bad campaign stop where he went, yeah, this like really embarrassing noise came out of him. That was it. That was it. His campaign was done after that because he made like this loud, weird, embarrassing noise. Right. So voting, right. It's not as if, and but people have this idea. People have this idea that voters are choosing the person who is best qualified to lead the nation. No, 
No, of course not. Absolutely not. Can you imagine? Can you imagine thinking and believing, and maybe it's because you're taught this in public school, I don't know, but believing that voters choose everyone based on who merits, you know, the position of president the most, or who would be the best senator, who's going to represent them the best. Do some people? Sure. Like the more high IQ, high informed, serious voters do. But most people who vote, it's not about that. And I'm sure you've all seen like man on the streets where they asked somebody like why they voted for Trump or why they didn't vote for Trump or things like that. And or why they liked Obama. There was tons of viral videos of black voters saying, I like Obama because he gave me a free cell phone or he's going to. Remember the lady crying after Obama got elected saying, I'm not going to have to pay rent anymore. I won't have to buy gas anymore because Obama is president. Okay. This is the average voter. <laughs> These are the people when you give everyone a say, when everyone gets to vote, this is how things go. You have, uh, what's, what's a nice way to put it? You have highly uninformed people out there choosing who's going to be president. I wish that it was this contest of who's the best candidate for the job, but it's not. It's not. Obviously, if people are voting for someone because they think their bills will disappear, if this person gets elected, or, you know, like even the MAGA side has become just as crazy. Now, I was a big Trump supporter. So was Andrew. Um, I don't know if we are now based on uh, Operation Warp Speed and some other things that happened. I'll tell you more about some of my misgivings and where I think he went wrong before. Uh, but before we get into that, it's just even the Republican side votes for people based on crazy stuff that has nothing to do with merit. Um, Steve Grady just sent me a $20 super chat. Thank you so much. He says, um, I just listened to your book on Audible and was blown away. Is there any particular branch of orthodoxy that would be most welcoming to a contrary, non-conforming ex-Catholic? Well, thank you so much, first of all, Steve. I'm glad you enjoyed the book. Um, we don't really have branches. Um, people, It can be kind of confusing how the ecclesiology of the church works when you're first entering it. You see like the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia. You see the Antiochians. You see the Bulgarians. You see the Greek Orthodox Church. And you think they might be like, branches or denominations, they all have the exact same beliefs. Um, it's just like how our church is structured with patriarchs and jurisdictions, why they're named that. And so, yes, you will see some ethnic stuff attached to that. But in America, to a large degree, I'd say half of people in Orthodox churches now or something like that are converts. So like, for instance, we go to an Antiochian church there's a large number of Middle Eastern people who go there, but I'd say it's largely people just like me who used to be Protestant and have converted. Um, so you just, the main thing you want to look for if you're looking for a church, Google which Orthodox churches are in your area, try them out, uh, you know, go to a liturgy and then stay for coffee hour and hang out and talk to the priest a little bit. And um, you'll kind of know where you fit. You know, you'll kind of start to understand like, which one, which priest, because your priest is going to be, you know, your spiritual father. He's going to be guiding you through the faith. So you'll kind of find somebody that really clicks with you more than maybe the other churches. So I wouldn't say like, look at it that way. And even if you're contrary, non-conforming, that's okay. Just take your time, take your time, make sure you're talking to the priest, make sure you're not getting your theology from Orthodox Twitter. Or, or even me or Andrew or anything like that. Um, hanging out in the Orthodox Discord is a good idea. You can ask a lot of questions there, but just visit local churches, talk to the priests, and you're going to kind of know. So that's what I would say. Um, let's see. So um, when we saw, you know, the, the last two elections and why people wanted to vote for Trump, there was crazy people wanting to vote for Trump because they believed the Q stuff. OK, they thought that there was like, you know, crazy stuff going on that, you know, uh, if we just trust the plan, Trump's going to save the world. So the, there's people that have this Messiah complex. People vote for wild reasons, wild reasons, <laughs> which is one of the reasons that I'm not a fan of having female politicians. Kind of like, oh, thank you so much, Slowboy Whiteboard, for saying I look cute today. I appreciate you. 
I usually get, you're not even hot though. Why are you on the internet if you're not even hot? Like, what's the point? Um, <laughs> I'll have you know I'm a Midwest six, okay? Um, but people vote for crazy reasons. It's not actually a contest of who is the most qualified. So that's the first thing we have to get out of our brain. Because most of the objections I got to my tweet were, um, what if the woman is born with amazing leadership skills? What if she's super smart? What if she has all the right positions? What if she's virtuous and, and awesome? What about the what about the outlier women who are amazing? Are there outlier women who are amazing? Absolutely. I know some of them personally. I know women in my life who I'm like, I, I have tremendous respect for and tons of, uh, you know, admiration for things they've accomplished. It's really not about that. Because again, in our system, we're not actually voting for the person who's most qualified. Okay. I wish that were the case. We're not. So set that aside first. Then think about the fact that, um, you know, the, the way the American government structure works when we're talking about presidents, it's people think we're electing a CEO. I feel like this got introduced maybe back in the 90s when Ross Perot was running and then Trump kind of benefited from this idea that, oh, we're, we should elect a businessman, a CEO who who's run a big structure before. He knows how to handle the ins and outs of the bureaucracy and he knows how to play the game and and he'll give us economic prosperity. Well, I mean, to some extent, did Trump create a good economy? Yeah, I think he did. But there was a lot about what Trump did that didn't work out. For one thing, what if you ask me what's the biggest flaw, the biggest mistake Trump made in his administration? Now, I could show you pictures of him at the Western Wall, and I could show you pictures of him with uh, female you know, pastors putting hands on him as though female Protestant pastors have apostolic succession, as though they can lay hands on anyone. Absurd absolutely absurd. Women cannot have apostolic succession and neither can Protestants. So when you combine the two and then give them this crazy heretical, like, you know, the, I forget the, the blonde lady that he had, but it was, she was like worse than Beth Moore, right? If you, if anyone remembers her, drop her name in the chat, because I think I blocked it out just for my own peace of mind. But, you know, we had all this time where Trump had like these crazy, weird Protestant faith healer type weirdos laying hands on him and praying and stuff. I think his biggest flaw was he hires and he did this in his businesses and it didn't work out in his businesses. He hired women all the time. He would find some woman that he found impressive in a power suit, thought looked good with shoulder pads, and then he'd hire her to run everything. How did that work out? Does anybody remember Omarosa? Does anybody remember the other blonde chick he had on The Apprentice that didn't turn out to be any good? No, that didn't work out for him. It was one of his biggest flaws. Christian says, loving the topic tonight. Your book finally arrived two days ago. We'll have time to start it tomorrow. Awesome. I hope you enjoy it. Hope you get something out of it. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, but yeah, it, Trump, you know, dragging Ivana or Ivanka in. He Well, he let Ivana, Ivanka's mother, run a bunch of his businesses into the ground. And then he lets Ivana and Jared in and they, they ruin everything, right? Something that drove me nuts, especially as somebody who supported Trump, was him and Ivana giving these Ivanka giving these huge uh, speeches about we're going to get mothers back into the workforce. We're going to put a package into Congress so that women can go back to work after they've had a bunch of kids. And I was like, why? Why would you do that? That is stupid. They are mothers. Mothers already have a full time job. Mothers have children to raise. Why would you do that? It was awful. Um, Henry says for 499 said that recently it seems a very gigabased right wing politician that will fight for America and Christians is a woman. <sighs> We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, but no, this was a terrible idea <laughs> that that Trump and his daughter had. We're going to send all the moms to work. We're going to push all the mothers into the workforce. Oh, and then who's going to raise all the kids? Smart ass. Who's going to raise all the kids? Genius. You know, first of all, for most mothers, if you have more than one, maybe two kids, it's likely not financially advantageous for you to work outside the home unless you're making a lot of money. But the average woman in America 
makes $40,000 a year. Let's say you have two kids, about average, or even below two kids, but let's just say two. Two kids, the cost of daycare, the cost of having a second vehicle, insuring that vehicle, putting gas in it, having a work wardrobe, um, having to have some kind of backup plan for if the kids get sick or things like that. Um, to try to work outside the home, you're going to be paying at least half what you make for the cost of having children while working, which do you think that's worth your children being raised by someone who is not their mother? Do you think that that's worth it for them to be in a daycare facility for probably about nine hours a day on average? I don't. You guys already know probably how I feel about that. I've done lots of streams about that, but it's a terrible idea. How did we have some, some someone who's supposed to be a Republican? Uh, I don't know if anyone ever thought Trump was conservative, but he was supposed to be this right wing crazy guy. And the first thing he wants to do when he gets into office is send all the mothers into the workplace. Get the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. That's stupid. That's retarded. It was his his daughter's idea, which when you're an elite wealthy woman and you've grown up with nannies and a working mom and you have nannies and housekeepers and millions of dollars. Sure. I guess you can afford to have this ridiculous idea that all the mothers need to work, but it's, it's a terrible idea. Uh, it's actually a very Marxist idea. This idea that women mothers in particular need to be in the workforce comes from like a Bolshevik Marxist point of view. So it's incredibly damaging, horrible idea. Wicked Wally says, not that I support taxes at all, but I'd rather spend that money giving every woman a new kitchen. I agree with you. That would be amazing. Just imagine. Just imagine if if we didn't have to spend all our taxes on uh, supporting illegals, all the dumb woman prattle programs that are out there. We didn't have to support with our taxes programs that help mothers go to work. If we could just buy them all new kitchens, that would be fantastic. I would be down for it. I, I like that idea. Um, but no, I thought that was a terrible idea. And he picked all these females, all these women to run things in his cabinet. Almost every single one of them backstabbed him, betrayed him, was disloyal, wrote an expose, tell-all book, you know, like Omarosa did that. Even Kellyanne Conway, her fat retard husband was, you know, um, talking about how Trump sucks and everything all the time. And she would just, you know. This man's just tweeting all this stuff that's in direct conflict to what she's supposed to be doing in her job, and then Trump has to deal with that. This happens all the time with him. He hires women because for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know what the psychology is of why he constantly wants these powerful boss babe pantsuit women in charge of everything, but he's been this way going back to the 80s, like I said, with Ivana Trump, his first wife put her in charge of a bunch of Trump hotel stuff, didn't do the best. Uh, he always hires these women and they don't perform well in general, for the most part. They never last. And then when they leave, they always write a tell-all book exposing him or something, right? Huge weakness, huge weakness. Why are we, <laughs> why, are, why are we electing a man who wants to do this? Okay, so that's stupid. Um, but furthermore, Let's just say that, you know, Trump's Trump's sweeping the primaries right now. I'm in Michigan. And he just beat the pants off Nikki Haley. He beat the power suit pants off Nikki Haley, beat the shoulder pads right off of her in the primary uh, by a hefty margin. Good. That's good. But he's just going to get back into office and put a bunch more women in charge. So I don't know how much better off we're going to be. Now, let's talk about Nikki Haley for a second. I don't think I have to talk about her too long because nobody likes her. Nobody on the left likes her. Nobody on the right likes her. She's extremely unlikable. She's not conservative. But here's the thing. Somebody was uh, arguing to me on Twitter that, you know, well, actually, a lot of the conservative women are more conservative than the men. And so maybe if we put all these conservative women in charge of everything, it's going to steer the party back to conservatism. The Republican Party hasn't been conservative for at least half a century maybe longer. I'd say pre-World War II, okay, in my opinion. Aside from that, if you think that 
Like, think of the cognitive dissonance that it requires to believe that the way to get the party to be more traditional, more conservative American values is to put women in charge of it. You've already lost. You've already lost. Now, if you haven't read my book, the book details how we got here, how we got to the point that we have a Republican Party that promotes LGBTQ ideology, that promotes do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting anybody or taking their stuff, which is a, a very liberal libertarian doctrine. Okay, It rejects Christianity. The Republican Party will give mouth service to Christianity during election cycles. The rest of the time, they're like, we ought to be new, neutral and secular, as if there is such a thing. There's no such thing as secular neutrality. There's this idea that, um, well, we should just govern from a neutral secular position. Nobody does that. You're just creating a power vacuum. Jim Bob articulates this very well all the time. If you haven't gone and subscribed to Made by Jim Bob, you should because he's excellent on this stuff. But no, there's no such thing as this illusion of secular neutrality that uh, we, we as Christians are going to enter politics and start governing from a secular worldview. Uh, well, the leftists don't do that. Uh, none of the non-Christians do that. They might say they do, but they don't. It's a very Luciferian worldview that they have. It's a very materialist worldview. Um, you could say that they're utilitarian. There's all kinds of ways you could describe them, but they're not neutral. There's no such thing as neutral morality. So to govern is to, you know, write and adjudicate and enforce law it's going to be related heavily to morality, right? So this idea that you can write neutral law and enforce that law neutrally is very slippery and I, I think nonsensical to begin with. So then to think that the, the way we got here where we have a Republican party that's supposed to be the conservative party that hasn't conserved anything, anything at all, uh, that the way we're going to somehow uh, pull them back to the right or make them more traditional is to let the women take over everything. This is a mindset that goes back to the progressive era where you had the Women's Christian Temperance Union, which a lot of people wrongly look back and think that this was a, a conservative movement. It was not at all a conservative movement. The women, women's Christian temperance movement, which was responsible for alcohol prohibition and a bunch of other, um, some, a lot of semi-eugenics kind of laws, a lot of like Bureau of Social Hygiene type policies, those are heavily progressive. The Women's Christian Temperance Union was a progressive organization led by progressives, extremely left progressives who identified as Christian. But if you look at the, the characters involved and what churches they went to and what things they actually believed, heavily progressive. It was part of the progressive era agenda. So we already have this completely wrong idea of what conservatism is or was, what traditionalism is or was. I think that's related to our like Americanist mindset, but this idea that we're going to somehow get everything where it needs to be by putting women in charge is insane because we got where we are by putting women in charge of everything. Feminism was the big uh, thing that opened Pandora's box with the progressive movement with things like the Christian Women's Temperance Union, the all the different suffrage organizations, the National Association of Women Lawyers, who in 1911 started the campaign for no-fault divorce. OK, so women have never and will never be the boundary keepers of like tradition and things like that. They can't be. They can't be because women are designed to be mothers. We are ontologically different than men. We are not the same as men. And what what women tend to do is promote fairness and equality. Everyone gets a hot meal. Um, everybody gets a blankie. Everybody should be safe and comfortable. Everybody should feel good, right? And and I understand why people confuse these things. I understand why men uh, who maybe don't know any of this historical background, they don't ever question the presuppositions of 
feminism and the world they grew up in, which is feminist. The air you're breathing is feminism. You're like a fish swimming in water that doesn't know they're swimming in water. I understand why those people think, well, but but Ellie Beth Stuckey and Carrie Lake can save us. I, I kind of, it sounds crazy, but I kind of understand why they think that uh, because there's this idea, right? And I want to dispel this myth. This is one of the big myths I want to start with, that women are going to be more fair, more virtuous, that if women ruled everything, there'd be peace. We wouldn't have war. Everyone would be taken care of, right? You're going to get your universal basic income. You're going to have your clean environment. You're, everyone's going to get an education, all these things. This is what people assume. And part of it is the propaganda of the feminist movement. The last 50 years, they've pushed this a lot, that men are violent inherently. Men are inherently violent and mean and cold and calculating and that women are caring and nurturing and and they care about fairness and egalitarianism and they're gonna take care of everyone okay so i kind of get that but it's wrong it's completely wrong headed to think that way and i'll explain why in just a second but kate jason's 499 and says only a woman would choose the most extreme safety measure to lock down in clown vid even to the detriment of society debbie burks remains guilt-free yes that Clown vid was a great, great uh, illustration of this whole idea, right? Safety first, safety and security first, right? You, I've often argued that without women's suffrage, you would not have the welfare state, the national security apparatus. You wouldn't have Big Brother. You would not think about it. When you go to the airport, who works at the TSA? Who's going to pat down your grandma? to make sure she's not carrying a box cutter on the plane. It's usually a large and lovely lady, okay? Women do the HR thing. That's what they do. When you put women in charge of stuff, they become HR managers. Now, if you want a world run by the HR department where everything is tone policing, everything is, well, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. If you want that, then by all means, elect a bunch of female politicians, put women in charge of everything uh, and see how nice you think they are. See how kind and virtuous and fair you think they are. Um, have you guys watched any of the podcasts that my husband goes on where he's trying to have logical, rational conversations with women? Any of you? Any of you seen this? Where he says something very plain, very logical, very rational expecting a logical, rational response. And what he gets is, actually, that's very offensive. Um, Actually, I don't really like the way you said that. I don't know why you can't be more educational. I don't really understand why you have to be so, like, offensive to me right now. Like, why can't you say it in a way that's more comfortable for me so that I will be receptive? Because that's a you problem. If you want a world run by women, that's the world you're going to live in. You're going to live in HR hell. You're going to live in HR hell. You think it's bad now? You think it's bad now when you have to go to your corporate job and watch a whole day's worth of videos explaining to you what appropriate workplace behavior is and why you can't talk to Samantha the same way you can talk to Jim, you know, like, and you've got to be trained. And then if you if you say the wrong thing, you get a week's pay taken away while you go to sensitivity training so that you can learn how to tone police yourself more effectively. It would, that's what it would be. Okay. It's worse than, it would be worse than communism. It would be worse than socialism. The, the follow-up to my first book, Occult Feminism, is going to be coming out this year. And it goes over the, all the Bolshevik Marxist feminists that Eastern European and Russian and even Central American feminists of the early 20th century and how freaking horrible they were and how they killed tons of people and ruined everything and made everything horrific and awful. And it's way worse than you can even imagine. And it's nowhere. It's not in any history books. There's never been a book that I can find. I've spent the last two and a half years looking. No one's written a book about this and they had tremendous influence it's insane. So I'm going to try to like illumine this whole part of history that people don't know about for this reason, because the HR hell world we live in right now is because of this. It's because they put a bunch of women in charge of stuff. 
They made Alexander Kolontai the first commissar for social welfare in the USSR. They started making women, um, you know, political envoys or, you know, put, putting them in various cabinet positions and stuff, starting there. The West caught on later, soon after, but it started in Marxism because, of course, under Marxist systems, no one person can be any better than anyone else. And there has to be this like total equality, even if it's forced. So that's how they started this stuff. And it was so bad. I mean, you guys are probably aware of the um, deleting of fetuses problem that Russia has had for the last century. And they still haven't recovered. And it's because it was the first country that they made this widely, not only legal, but encouraged and paid for by state hospitals because this woman, this hardcore feminist woman who ran, you know, the social welfare part of Lenin's government made it that way. And it it incredibly drastically increased fetus deletion rates to the point that by the time Stalin took power, they only had one live birth in Russia for every three fetus deletions. I'm using YouTube lingo, so forgive forgive the language. I don't like it, but it's kind of what we have to do, you know. It was so bad. It's like it would wipe out humanity if it continued. It would wipe out the Russian population if it spread through the world and continued like that. It would wipe out the population. We're seeing it now. We're seeing it now because Korea is at a 0.78 birth rate. Here in the United States, we're around 1.5-ish. Depends on the demographic you're looking at. It's below replacement in most of the world. We have HR hell world that we live in. We have, you can't walk into a Target without LGBT stuff plastered everywhere. Your kids can't go to a public school without having to learn about non-binary, uh, you know, gay sex stuff. Do you ever wonder how we got here? Do you think that it was just, you know, men all of a sudden after thousands of years of running everything in the world, they suddenly just had this this mental shift where they all went, you know what? I think we should make everything gay and trans and and we should make everything uh, infertile and we should just focus on material. No, no. The way that that happened was the feminization of everything, the feminization of all the institutions, the churches, the governments, uh, society at large, the schools for sure. Um, I have a great book right here in my giant stack that y'all should get School World Order by John Kleisek explains a lot of how this came to be and the progressives that infiltrated, well, created the public school system and how that all happened. But it was, it was not masculinity that was the problem. It was not men that were the problem. The world was how the world was for thousands of years until the last century. What changed? Women. What changed? Feminism, egalitarianism, this idea that we're going to we have to push women into all of men's spaces. So this is my next point. My next point is, even if you found great women, we have the best female politicians, right? I'll do my Trump. We have the best female politicians, maybe anywhere. I mean, people say, maybe we have the best female politicians anyone's ever seen. Okay, you get the best ones, the smartest. They have merit. They have grit. They're Nikki Haley with her high heels going to stomp all the all the male candidates with her high heels while she's dancing around on her campaign trail to man eater. Did you guys see that ad? Did you see the Nikki Haley ad with man eater as the song? Uh, like, tell me who you are, Nikki Haley. Uh, I, Cause I don't know. I'm confused. Um, that we're going to that we're going to put all the women in charge and they're the best women. They're the most conservative, right? They're super Christian, they're super virtuous. They have all the merit in the world. Well, what happens when you push women into men's spaces? Have you ever observed a time that you had a traditionally male space and then you let women in and it doesn't ruin everything? Has that ever happened? Have you ever seen that? Have you guys ever seen where they take a male space, something that was a traditionally masculine occupation, club, group, uh, endeavor of any kind, and then they go, well, I mean, I guess we can't tell the women they can't be here. So, you know, I will make an exception for this woman or we'll make an exception for that woman because, well, she's qualified. And so I guess we have to let her. 
And then what happens? Take the military, for example. Okay. They start letting women in. And at first, at first, it's always, well, we'll let the women in, but they have to be only in certain roles. And, uh, you know, we won't put them on front lines of combat and that, 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 right? Or we're going to, we're going to have limits. We're going to have limits. Oh, no, 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 no. If you let the women in and then tell them there's a limit in their defense, you have no argument in their defense. I disagree with them, but in their defense from their perspective, I'm sorry, you just made an exception. There was a limit. There was a boundary. You threw that boundary out the window to let me in because I was exceptional in some way, or it was fair to let me in. Now you want to tell me I can't be the boss of this space? You want to tell me I can't be in charge in the space? You want to tell me that I got to stay in my woman lane? Oh, no. That's not going to happen. And the problem is that you've already conceded your own argument. You've already given up the game. If you let them in because of fairness or because of merit or things like that, then you have no grounding to stand on to tell them that they can't run things. What happens next? Now you have women who are in charge of men telling the men what to do. You have what happens to the hierarchy. Have you ever thought about this? So through all of human history, we had hierarchical structures. Now, if you're a libertarian minded person, uh, if you're a you can't tell me what to do, you're not the boss of me. I don't want to no kings, you know, no rulers. If you're one of those people, you're not going to like what I have to say. But hierarchy is a part of nature. It's structured into the reality we live in. I'm not talking about an ought claim, I'm not saying what I think ought be the case. I'm saying that the case is we have a reality which includes hierarchy, meaning we don't take like the mentally challenged person who has trouble walking and then, you know, put them on the NFL football team for very obvious reasons. OK, we don't um, take the person who doesn't understand, you know, can't even pass like second or third grade math. Everybody. I was a person who wasn't like great at math. I was OK. But I was never going to do like, you know, uh, high level, you know, physics, math or something like that. It would be like we don't take me and put me in charge of NASA's <laughs> NASA's rocket program. <laughs> right. We don't um, take the people who uh, don't understand biology and put them in charge of like, you know, um, curing cancer. Hierarchy is there for a reason. We do have such things as merit and hierarchy. We have you know, men who are good military strategists running the military, hopefully, hopefully this is how we do things. We have people who are better suited for handling power in positions of power. If you want to talk about merit, merit is going to include hierarchy. OK, so the people who are saying, but what if the woman has merit? OK, well, when you're talking about merit, what you're really saying is I think there should be a hierarchical structure of some kind. I think that there's not everything is meant for everyone. There should be some limits, right? Some limits. Now, am I saying women can't leave the kitchen? No. Am I saying women can't do sports? Am I saying they can't do traditionally masculine hobbies for fun? Of course not. I do all those things, as people always point out. In fact, the dummies on Twitter are like, oh, by your logic, I shouldn't listen to you because you're a woman on the Internet. Yeah, OK, that's not the point. Uh, slow person, let me help you out a little bit. I'm here on the Internet talking about this stuff because y'all put women in charge of things and push them into all the male spaces before I was ever even born. I was born into a world where there's women everywhere running everything. There's women voting on stuff. There's women running schools. There's women, you know, running areas of government. There's female clergy. There's, you know, the Presbyterian church has, the Lutheran church has female bishops and everything else. So for you to think that now that means I can't talk, well, no, you created the rules. I just live in the world. So now here I am with my voice because listen to all women. You got to listen to me. And be respectful because I'm a woman. It's your rule. It's not my rule. So I'm going to use my voice to say, I think this is stupid and it sucks. And I think it ruins things for people, including me. Right. So I'm very rambly. I'm sorry. I get going and I get a little bit excited. But we're, we want hierarchy. We understand that naturally there's a hierarchy. Packs of animals have hierarchy. Chimpanzees, wolves, 
whatever. Uh, anything that has any measure of intelligence has some kind of hierarchy built into how their social dynamic works. That's how it is. That's how reality works. Okay. By taking women and going, well, things should be fair. First of all, who decided that? On what basis did you decide we ought put everyone in everything and that everyone ought do everything? Just because fairness, because arbitrary ideas of fairness that don't even exist in the in the temporal reality we live in, that's absurd. But somewhere along the line during the Enlightenment, they decided everyone should have a say and everyone is special and everyone is worthy and and we should just let everybody in. And at first it did, you know, the the older Enlightenment idealists would say, we do need merit. You know, a woman should be let into traditionally male spaces if she merits it. Well, I can tell you that that went off the rails immediately because one of the first women that was let into intellectual circles and allowed to speak publicly on political matters was Mary Wollstonecraft. And she was no genius. Have you ever read A Vindication of the Rights of Woman? This is why this is why y'all should send me super chats because I have and it's god awful. It's boring. It sucks. Her presuppositions are stupid. Her logic is faulty. It's garbage. It's garbage. If you now you would never know this because the women's studies departments tell you she was a brilliant genius and she was this incredible per no, no. And in fact, if you ever are bored enough to go back and read the writings of early feminists, none of them. None of them were just like, oh, I can see why they let her in. She was just a mental giant. She was a mental giant. How could they deny her fantastic talent? No, they sucked. They weren't very smart. They didn't make good arguments. It was the same stuff we're dealing with now. It was, what about the men, though? It was, what about my feelings? It was uh, taking the exception and trying to apply it to make a rule. Uh, it was all the things that we know women do now when they try to argue, right? For the most part, on average, are there some women who don't? Yes. Are they few and far between? Also, yes. So um, they immediately started letting women in who had no merit on anything. Now, you might think to yourself, but Rachel, there were queens in history, right? We had queens um, who they ruled countries. You know, we, we let women be in charge of whole countries is another big pushback I get. First of all, that only happened if there wasn't a man. There was never a king and a queen and the country just went, you know what? She really merits running everything. So we're going to make her the primary and we're going to make the king the secondary person. That's not how it worked. Usually if a queen was in charge, it was because there was no fit male ruler. There might have been some exceptions in some like Eastern cultures or indigenous cultures that maybe I'm not aware of. I'm sure there's exceptions, but that doesn't make the rule. And here's the big thing about queens. When people like to invoke this argument to me, I've been thinking about it for a while. And it's like, OK, when Mary the first Bloody Mary became queen and ruled England and much of what you know is now the U.K., that never was applied to the public at large because Mary the first was queen of England. The average English woman didn't go, actually, we have a queen. So like women can do whatever they want. And I should be in charge of you now because there's a woman in charge of the country. So <laughs> that it was a different time where they had an elitist structure, again, a hierarchy. And within the hierarchy, they weren't going to let like a male peasant run things. So if there wasn't a male aristocrat available to run things, they would have a woman do it and things like that. Even then, she was still answerable usually to a court, oftentimes to male clergy, things of this nature. So the idea that there were queens in history, this somehow proving the rule that all women everywhere deserve to be political leaders, it just doesn't follow. I think that's just a terrible argument. So um, we're going to take a, a brief break to read a couple of Super Chats because I've had a few coming in. Do, do, do. Um, okay, this one from Ryan says, first time catching you live, Mrs. Wilson. Great points and great info. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you're here. And then Thomas O'Brien sends 20 bucks. Thank you so much, Thomas. And he says, thank you for reading the boring stuff so I don't have to. You have no idea. I'm just going to say you guys have no idea the the 
the hit that I have taken reading some of these women like Victoria Woodhull or uh, Alice Bailey or Margaret Fuller, it's just like, it's awful. It's horrible. You, you wouldn't probably get through two pages before you just tossed it in a fire. Uh, looking forward to see you crushing it on whatever. Yes, I will be. Everybody keeps going, when are you going on whatever? I will. I'm gonna. But like I said, there's kids. I got to take care of my kids first. The last thing I'm going to do is like ditch my kids to run off and do podcasts. Okay. They're only, they're 15 and 12 and they're my last two at home. I only have six more years. Okay. And then my momming is done and I'm not going to miss the last six years of that for any podcast or any internet fame or clout or none of this shit. I don't really care about it, to be honest. Um, I think my husband's really good at it and he should do it. I think his, he is uniquely gifted and is doing what he ought to do with his life. For me, this is something I like to do as my little contribution instead of like, you know, going to the mall or watching, um, you know, Netflix. I read old, boring feminist writing, and then I tell you why it sucks and it's stupid and it's wrong. And that's a fun hobby for me. And then, you know, I do a little bit of this. It's, I just enjoy it. It's something I like to do. It sets me up to have something else to fill my time when I have empty nest syndrome. Hopefully I'll get lots of grandkids and then I won't have too much of that. <laughs> but I am going to be going on. We're just trying to figure out like when it works for the family. This stuff for me comes last, which is why I think it's funny when people create insane narratives that I'm the boss babe in charge, that I'm some uh, pantsuit wearing career woman. I've written one book, Calm Down, okay? <laughs> Calm Down. <laughs> um, but no, we're, I'm going to do it because I think it'll be a lot of fun, but it's going to be around the kids' homeschool schedule. It's going to be around Andrew's schedule, which all comes first. Um, maybe like April-ish, I think, would be a good time. It's looking like that'll be a good time. Andrew's got a bunch of traveling for March, so maybe April. We'll see, okay? But I do have an open invitation. Brian's very nice to us, and he's super accommodating. So. Um, I, we will. I will do it. I will do it soon. OK. So anyway, back to hierarchy, back to um, queens not proving the rule that because there were queens in history who were monarchs, who were part of the elite ruling class and exceptions, that this means all women everywhere need to be astronauts and pilots and politicians and governors and presidents. No. OK. Now, going back to our American system, in our political system, the president is also the head of the military, right? He's the chief officer of the military. Do you really want a woman to be in charge of the military? Do you think that's appropriate? I don't. I don't think that we should have a female head of the military. Historically, not much precedent for that. Um, people try to talk about Joan of Arc, but she was a little bit crazy and she was like a religious fanatic and she wasn't like a great military leader. She wasn't no Genghis Khan or anything like that. So, no, I don't like that idea either. Um, and again, I don't think this is based on the merits. Could you have an exceptional woman? Could you have? Like, do, do they exist? Could there be some exceptional woman who might do OK in that role? Yeah, but here's my thing. At what cost? At what cost, right? Why push women into governing roles, either in the church or in the government? For one thing, we already have a ton of data on how that goes and what that does in society. We've got 100 years of pushing women into male spaces and male roles. And what we see is the birth rate drops like a rock. If you tell women that the way to be successful, because women like brownie points. I'm even this way myself. We like to get our pats on the head. We like to be told we're doing a good job. We like approval. We want to be successful. We want to be seen as doing a good job in life, right? If you tell women the way to do that is to put on your shoulder pads and act like a man and try to beat a man at the men's game, that's what most of them will do. And that's what most of them are doing now. And so they begin to see motherhood as something beneath them, something that holds them back, something that isn't worthy, because it's a huge endeavor. It's a lifelong commitment, includes a lot of sacrifice. 
I don't like to hammer the sacrifice aspect of motherhood, though, because I love it. I love my kids. I like spending time with them. I like being home with them. The times when I have had to work were heartbreaking for me. I would cry. There's been time. And I know you guys have been there, too. This is why when I get accused of hating working women, that's absurd. We are in a system now where sometimes you have to. It's like, am I going to lose my kid's house? You know, because my husband had to switch jobs and we fell behind or or my maybe your husband gets sick or he has a disability and you have to work. Right. That happens. But when when that happened to me, the short, small periods of time where I did have to, like, actually work full time outside the house, it wasn't a lot. But I'd say over the past 23 years that I've had kids, it was maybe five to seven of those years. If you add it all up and the times when I did, I would cry. I would literally go like get ready because I had to go to work the next day and try to go to bed early so I could get up on time. And I would just sit there and cry because I didn't want to be separated from my kids. I didn't want to go to a job I don't care about and pay some other person to like take care of my kids, which is my job that I want to do. Right. So to push. I And I've seen tons of videos of women having this exact experience and they're never validated right? We always have to listen to women and validate women unless they say, wait, I want to be a mom. And then it's like, you'll get used to it. Just go back to work. You'll get used to it. The kid will get used to it. It's bullshit. I think it's bullshit, but we're pushing women to do these things. So here we are now with, I think a third of Australian parliament is women now. And they're always just upset that it's not enough. Germany is run by a woman and has something like a quarter to a third of their politicians are female. That's still not enough. Uh, You know, England has had a female prime minister and people like to bring up Margaret Thatcher. Uh, who, Who is talking about deleting comments? By the way, my mods, if my mods are deleting your stuff, then it needs to be deleted. So please respect my mods. They're good mods. Uh, yeah, don't schizo post, don't spam my chat, don't say stuff that's going to get my YouTube, you know, smacked. So don't be an asshole in the chat. Uh, but we have a ton of women in politics in the entire Western world. And even in the East now, there's like a lot of, you know, females in politics. It's never enough. It'll never be enough. We could have 50% women and I think they'd still come up with a reason why actually it's not enough and it should be more. Um, But where's this idea coming from that somehow it's unfair to tell women that there are things that are not for them, right? When I look at it, it seems to me like, um, okay, sir, you're going to take a little time out because you need to calm down, BK, BN, BK, the guy who's spurging in the chat, calm down. Okay, Uh, egalitarianism, where did we get this idea that It's not fair unless everyone gets to do the same things, okay? I feel like women are the only group that feel entitled to, I should get to be there. You can't tell me, I. you can't say I can't be in your club. You can't say I can't do this thing. You can't put limits on me. Who are you to put limits on me? We put limits on men all the time. We put limits on men all the time and tell them, how many rules are there for men of things they can't do? You can't talk this way. You can't look at me wrong. You know, you can't use this tone. You can't be in this space because it's just for women, right? We have tons of restrictions on men and what they're allowed to do. It seems as though it's only women that think there should be no limit on what they're allowed to do. What's proper for women? Everything. What's proper for men? Whatever women say, right? Am I wrong? Isn't this the rule? The rule is now women are for everything. No boundaries, no limits on the women. The women can do anything. But the men, no. In fact, we really need to work harder on putting more limits on the men. In fact, the men are doing something wrong unless they're acting like women. Do we not do this to little boys in school? You have to sit still. You have to be quiet. You have to be respectful. You can't have too much energy. You can't be too rowdy. Sit in the desk for seven hours a day. It's insane to do that to little boys. It, you create a system they can't even, uh, let, they can't exist in it, let alone thrive in it. And we wonder why they're all doing so badly. So it's like, how is it egalitarian? How is it fair to say to the men, 
oh, there's all these restrictions on how you can talk, what you can say, how you can say it, where you can be, what you can do. But for women, no limits, no boundaries. Now, I just feel like <laughs> we can do a ton of things. Why is the fact that you can't be the president, the commander in chief of the military, but you can do all these other, you can, you can have a career. Women have been able to a good section of my book, which if you haven't read it, it's called Occult Feminism, The Secret History of Women's Liberation. You can find it on Amazon. I take a whole chapter to go over all the things women have historically been allowed to do because the average person out there thinks that until 1920, when the suffragettes gave us the right to vote, that women couldn't do anything. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't read. They couldn't have. No, that's all bullshit. I don't even know where you got that from. It's all lies. Women have had the highest literacy rates in America since we started keeping track in 1790. More women have graduated high school than men since the founding of the country when we started tracking high school graduation rates in the late 1700s, okay? So women have always been, they've been allowed to read as long as men. When the printing press got invented and people could have Bibles, the women were able to read it. Now, were there some cults or some exceptions somewhere where maybe some guy didn't let his daughters learn to read? Maybe, but on a broad scale, Throughout the entire Western world, women have always worked. It's just that prior to the Industrial Revolution, just like men, they tended to work at home on the homestead or they worked in the family business or they worked, you know, with their family in the village they lived in, just like men did. There's a, a longstanding uh, pattern where anything that put a limit on women was oppression. But then we're not going to talk about the fact that men had the exact same limitations. A good example of this is suffrage. People think that all men have always been allowed to vote ever since democracy. Wrong. Didn't happen. Wasn't the case. Most men were excluded from voting in the United States and in the UK, anywhere in the West, that you had democracy or a representative republic. It was limited to like, you know, Per, maybe male landowners or only men over a certain age or only uh, men who, you know, participated in some kind of public life. There was, it depended on where you were, but it was not just all men could vote and no women could vote. That was never the case. In fact, in the UK, men only got universal suffrage a decade before women. I don't know how this is some kind of grave injustice and great oppression. So they'll they'll frame history using something called standpoint theory, which I did a whole episode on that with Jim Bob on his channel, if you want to watch that. But they frame history as though anything women didn't like historically was oppression, but that men just got to do whatever they wanted was never the case. The vast majority of men died young, never even made it to a reproductive age because they either got sick or they died in dangerous work, keeping everything going, or they were sent off to battles to die. Okay. So historically, twice as many women have been able to reproduce as men. We know this from like genetic studies, 80% of women who've ever lived on this planet have been able to reproduce. Only 40% of men who've ever lived have been able to reproduce. Now, if I wanted to, I could frame that as men's oppression. I don't because it's just kind of neither here nor there. But I mean, this is what feminists do with women. They look at any historical example of any limitation, no matter how small, that there's ever been on women, and then they'll blow it out of proportion, act like there was no comparable thing that men suffered, and then say that this is an example of all men working to oppress all women throughout all of history, and it's just wrong. So most people, when they're telling me, well, but why can't we have Carrie Lake or Tulsi Gabbard be the VP? I think that they merit the position, blah, blah, blah. They're, they don't know it, but in the back of their head, they're operating off of this presupposition that historically women were capable and they merited certain things and that they were unfairly restricted, whereas men were not. And that's simply not the case. So a, I'd say 90% of the work I do between my Substack writing, my books, my live streams, my interviews is dedicated to trying to correct the historical record about this. Because most people just have a wrong presuppositional impression 
of history when it comes to men and women. That men generally had the liberty to do whatever and that all doors were open to men to do anything they wanted and that women were limited to the kitchen, right? That we could only be in the kitchen and have babies and that was it. And we were unfairly restricted. We were unfairly oppressed. And it's just not true. It's just not true. And I can, you can go back and watch a bunch of my streams. The one with Edward Dutton has a lot on that. Um, but that's just not the case. So let's dispel with this myth that women are the only ones who ever have limits or boundaries on what they're allowed to do and that men can just do whatever they want. If anything, I'd say it's the other way around. If anything, I'd say it's much harder for men because men do have a hierarchy among men and you can't really usurp that hierarchy. You have to merit it, right? If you are full of shit, if you can't provide value, you will not climb a male hierarchy as a man, period. But with women, what happens is that hierarchy gets completely skewed. It gets inverted. It gets subverted. And it dissolves that. It dissolves it. And what happens is we have the chaos we have now. So when you when you throw women into something like politics, which is a male domain, it's a dirty, uh, rough, difficult thing, politics. Okay? If you take women and you throw them in the mix, it's like it changes the whole dynamic of how the system works. Because first of all, you have the sexuality component, right? Now you have a female thrown into a male domain. There's always going to be things that happen. There's going to be scandals. There's going to be perceptions of the woman based on what she looks like. Now, are there perceptions of men based on what they look like? Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not It's not quite the same deal, right? Whereas if you take a hot chick and put her on billboards and put her in ads, like look at Lauren Boebert, okay? Again, no mental giant, no person whose intellect the world would just be lost if we didn't have it, okay? She, is she somewhat competent? Sure. Are, are a lot of these female politicians like competent? Yeah. But could they do just as well like running a retail store? Yes. Is that about the level? Do you think Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is like somebody who was just destined for greatness? Like her intellect couldn't be denied by the world. Her leadership capabilities just couldn't be restrained by the patriarchy because she was that good. No, of course not. She's kind of hot. Not my cup of tea, but I'm a woman, okay? So, but she's hot enough. And the the press loves that. The media loves that. The, the media machine loves that. And they love to take a pretty woman and she's like, she's going to take on the world. Look at her. She's, she's kind of hot and has a suit on. And she's going to go in there and she's going to tell those men. So like, just by putting a woman in the mix, you've changed the whole dynamic. You've changed the entire structure of whatever that organization was, and it is now something else. Is it fair? No. Is that the way it is? Yes. So people struggle a lot mentally with how they think things ought to be based on some presupposition of fairness or justice or equality. And they'll say, but it shouldn't be that way. Well, it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you take hot chicks and put them in the military, what happens? They get pregnant. Uh, dudes fight over them. There's affairs. There's scandal. It's just what happens. It's human nature. You can't just take attractive, fertile women, throw them into men's spaces, and expect that it won't disrupt anything. Now, you might not like that. You might say it's not fair. You might say, well, I don't think it should be that way. Those things might all be true. I don't think they are. But let's just say they are. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing that's going to change that. There's nothing that's going to make it any different. Okay. So there again, you're you're just changing, you're fundamentally changing and disrupting the hierarchy, the institution itself of what it even means to be a politician by throwing women in the mix. Uh, let's see, I got another super chat here. Thank you so much, Nobody Important, for sending me $5. I appreciate it. He says, every female soldier is just as capable until they get on the baggage detail. <laughs> we throw duffel bags to each other on the plane. Yes. Yes. Well, this is the thing, right? Everybody's seen the meme of feminists when World War III comes and suddenly they're doing dishes. Uh, it, yeah, that's what it is. And 
I've said this a million times. You guys have probably seen when I debate feminists and they tell me women can do anything men can do because we have tools and uh, it just took us longer to catch up because we weren't allowed. Uh, whatever silly, dumb excuses they come up with doesn't really matter. I just say to them, okay, if the power grid goes out in a large area, say there's a hurricane that hits Florida and half of Georgia and they're all out of power, happens fairly regularly, okay? Giant flood in Louisiana knocks out the power to 2 million people. Are the women going to go out in the floodwaters and put up barricades and get the power grid back up and do this extremely dangerous work of trying to rescue people? Are they going to be, you know, taking people off of rooftops, dragging them through the floodwaters, you know, doing high risk rescue operations? No, no, they're not now and they won't ever be. They won't ever be. I'm sorry. There was a, a lovely lady who was just arguing with Andrew on Access Vegas about this and telling him that, yeah, the women can do everything in a combat zone, really, that the men can do. Uh, the women can uh, load artillery shells. The women, no, no, not even she actually did any of that. So it's it's baloney, right? This is cope. It's baloney. It's to me, it's the exact same thing as trans women saying they're women. No, you're not. No, you're not. And you never will be. Uh, part of my worldview is that God created us a certain way and we can't be something we weren't created as, right? You can't, I'm not a frog or a pony, no matter how much I want to be. And no amount of wishing, wanting, willing it will do, will change that. No amount of government, uh, you know, programs to give me scholarships and help me get surgeries is going to turn me into something that I'm not. This is the law of identity. This is why it would be cool if women demand to be in male spaces that they would at least learn ba basic logic, basic reason, but they don't. This is why Andrew's undefeated. This is why I'm undefeated when I debate feminists. They can't beat us because they're denying reality. And they tend to be materialist anyway, right? They tend to be materialistic in their worldview, but then they deny material reality. So they're always going to have this cognitive dissonance and they're never going to be able to do what they want, right? They're never going to win the argument. And this this idea, it's it's very much like evolution, that if we just give them enough time, they'll turn into something else, right? Uh, we, you know, it's just because women were oppressed. And if we just give them enough time, they'll basically become pretty men. No, no, that's because you think you don't understand that we're fundamentally created different, right? So even if you're not Christian, even if you are atheist, even if you're materialist, as a materialist, you should be able to look at the situation and see men and women are not in any way the same. Their brains are different. Their biology is different. Their uh, hormones are completely different. Okay. So that's where we get back to this idea of women being more virtuous people, that the world would be peaceful and everything would be fair if women were in charge. Is that what you guys see? When there's a woman in charge of a big HR department in a corporation, do you feel like that workplace becomes more fair, more peaceful, that that the organization uh, follows more virtuous ethics, or do you not? I'm curious what you guys think in the chat about that one. Uh, Nick DR, $5. Speaking of that woman on Access Vegas, she has had an HR position in the military. Ironic. Yes. And I believe that's what she does now. Now, she was, I had a brief exchange with her on Instagram. She was very kind. I don't hate her. I'm not mad at her. I'm not, I don't hate any of these women. I'm not mad at any of them. They grew up in a world that forced these ideas on them and told them they're just like a man. They're capable. You need to get out there. You need to run a five minute mile. You need to deadlift 400 pounds. You need to show the men that you can do it. And it's like, I like that stuff. I love lifting weights. I like, I like doing lots of male activities. But I think it's because I do those things. And I know that, like, even though I'm really good at those things for a woman, like, Andrew doesn't train. He doesn't lift. He doesn't go to the gym. He's he's not a gym guy. He he lives up here. He likes to read. He's a very cerebral person. He's just going to the gym and, like, picking up the same thing and putting it down 20 times doesn't make sense to him. He doesn't care about it. I love it. But he could go into the gym 
get on a leg press and probably out press me with no training because he's bigger, he's stronger, he has denser bones, he's <laughs> he's built differently, right? Than I am. So even me training for 15 years, he's probably going to outpress me on the leg press. He's probably going to outbench press me with no training whatsoever. So that's just how it is. And and people it's it's ironic because the people who want female equality are usually atheist, agnostic, progressive, science enjoyers who are materialists. And they're the ones who deny this material reality of this huge gulf in the differences between men and women. It's kind of kind of crazy and ironic. Skullpaf sends $10. You can tell Andrew it was specifically requested you be allowed to keep $1.50 of this. Well, I'll tell him, but this is patriarchy country around here. So if it goes to the gun collection, it goes to the gun collection. I mean, he, he might buy me a Pepsi with it or something. I don't even know if you can get a Pepsi for a buck fifty, but maybe he might buy me a beer. Thank you so much, Skopaf. I appreciate it the uh, super chat. You guys are so generous today. Thank you so much. The dono chat is also pinned to the top of the chat and I'm going to do the dono chats in just a minute. I'm almost done with my rant. I don't want to go on forever, but um, let's see what else. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was societal cohesion. Okay. So this for, for a lot of people who don't give a shit, if you're like an anarchist type who uh, doesn't, uh, this is a really pervasive view too. You hear the women say this all the time to my husband. He'll say, uh, if women's pursuit of career goals and power means that the birth rate falls so low that humanity just dies off, are you willing to bite that bullet? So far, I think four, four of them he's asked this question from my count. So far, all four have said yes. If humanity has to die for me to have my lip fillers and my car that I want and my nails done and my trips to wherever and my material things, if humanity has to die out for me to have my stuff, so be it, because I don't owe the world kids. I don't got to have kids. I don't even care, right? If you're a person who just wants to see humanity wiped off the face of the planet, maybe you won't care about this. But I think that if you look at the last hundred years of pushing women into male spaces, telling everyone that men and women are the same, telling women that in order to win in life, you have to be like a man, you have to beat men at their own game, you have to do what men do, only better, as if that ever happens, um, that what we've done is we've completely unraveled society. And this has to do with this hierarchy I was talking about. People don't like hierarchy because not everyone's going to be at the top, right? That's the objection. Well, I don't like hierarchy. Okay, why not? Well, because I'm not at the top. And, and why can't I be at the top? How come he gets to be at the top? How come she be, gets to be at the top, right? Everyone always feels entitled, like they should have better or be better than they are. And so it's the system that's the problem rather than looking at themselves and going, well, I could work on my weaknesses and I could improve and I could improve my station in life, okay? Nobody likes that. They like to blame the system and say, hierarchy is the problem. We just need to make everything equal. Well, you can't. That's an illusion. It's it doesn't work like that, okay? I am I was never born with the bone structure and everything of like a supermodel. I wasn't born one of these women that like you look at her and you're just like, oh my God, she's stunning. Like those women are just born with an arbitrary power that they didn't earn that will give them anything they want in life, pretty much, okay? Same thing with some men. Some men are just exceptional. They're taller, they're stronger, they're smarter, they're faster than everybody else. As how it is. So egalitarianism, equality is not possible, okay? You can't control for outcomes and make everything equal. So that's silly. But the worst thing that happens is that by it, attempting to invert the hierarchy and throw off the social order and, and try to make everything equal, you make things less equal. What, have you guys ever wondered why we have a greater income disparity now among the like upper class and the lower class than we did 100 years ago? Why the average person in the 50s, like a janitor could afford a, a house and a family on one income and now you're lucky if you can afford two kids on two incomes? Have you ever wondered why there's, you know, the t there's more billionaires and more people below the poverty line and fewer people in the middle? Um, 
it, yeah, when you, it turns out that when you try to usurp this hierarchical order and you try to invert the way that God created reality, which has patterns, you know, things like fractals and things like math and all of the transcendental categories that show this pattern to reality and how things were created. When you try to go, you know what? I think that sucks. I'm just going to remake the world in my image. When you do that, it tends to worsen conditions for more people than not. This is what happens with communism, right? The more you try to make everything equal across the board and erase all the differences and make everyone the same, the worse everything gets for everyone. Now, I think this is like a it's like a it's like a cosmic effect to me. You could argue like the economics and and things like that and I'm sure you could make all those good points, but to me when I look when I zoom way out and look at it, I think of it as like an an ontological cosmic effect of trying to destroy God's order and replace it with our own, right? You're going to fuck everything up. And this is what happens with women. So do I want female politicians, even though some of them might be highly qualified and really amazing and just super awesome? Like if we had She-Ra, could she just run everything? No, I don't think it's worth the cost. I don't think it's worth the cost of destroying uh, male spaces, which are meant for men to compete, right? Politics, the military, um, even like all, all of the governing structures where men have authority by shoving women into them, you ruin them. You change the nature of what that thing is. You radically deconstruct whatever that institution is, which, by the way, is the goal of the people who want to shove all the feminists in there. They know it will destroy the institutions. They know it will corrupt the hierarchy. They know that it will unravel and pull society apart at the seams. And they say this, they say this in their own writings over and over and over and over. So it comes from a hatred and a disdain for God's order, for the created order as it stands, even from an atheist perspective, right? The evolutionary, all the evil, evo psych dudes in the red pill sphere will still agree with me on this. However you think we got here, there's a created order. There's a way reality works. There's a natural male hierarchy. Women are outside of the hierarchy. Women compete for the best men right? That's how it works. By trying to treat men and women the same, shove the women into the male spaces, you tear society apart at the seams. You unravel the family unit. You unravel the institutions. You unravel the hierarchy. You disrupt the entire order from the ground up. Ground up. It all becomes corrupted. And then you're in HR hell, which is where we are now. So no, from my, this is my opinion, okay? Just my opinion. I don't want any female politicians. I don't want Nikki Haley. I don't want Carrie Lake. I don't want Hillary Clinton. I don't care if she's a Republican. I don't care if she's a Democrat. I don't care if she says all the right things. I want men to be in charge. I want men to have the authority they deserve that goes along with the responsibility they have of keeping the entire modern world running. It is not women who created and maintained the electrical power grid and the basic infrastructure of the world I live in. It is not women who built this entire world that allows me to talk to you through the screen right now. It's men. Okay. So you don't tell men that they're responsible for keeping the lights on and keeping every, keeping the logistical world fed and watered and disease free and whatnot. And then say, but you also don't get to have any authority to go along with that. You have to do what the women say. No. No, all you've done is strip away any motivation for men to do what men do best. And you've destroyed men by trying to elevate women and replace men with women. It just, any way you look at it from every angle, I think it's it's a bad idea. I think it's a terrible idea. I don't like it. I will never vote for a woman. Um, I, I, I only vote for whoever Andrew tells me to vote for anyway, because I'm just doubling his vote. I know everybody gets mad when I say that, but you'll just have to live with it. Somebody in the chat said, tell us what your book is about. Okay, the book is about the actual history of feminism. Because everybody's been told a story about how feminism came about, that women just looked around and went, oh my God, we're oppressed. We can't have this. And so they started marching until they got the vote. And then they set set on a path to like, you know, uh, be able to do all the things and chase their dreams and whatever. That's not how it happened. It was a completely astroturfed, 
completely bought and paid for fake movement by certain political actors with certain religious beliefs on the whole, um, and that it's actually spiritual warfare. But um, so there's that that aspect of the book with the spiritual warfare and the occult beliefs and how a lot of the suffragettes were actually like Satanists. Not my theory. I didn't come up with it. Again, all the sources, there's this huge bibliography in the back of the book. I think it's got 200 some citations over several pages. It's all the writings of the feminists and the suffragettes themselves. It's not my, not me just making it up. I'm just telling you what they say because the average person never reads any of this shit. And even the women's studies majors, a lot of them only read certain portions of certain writings, okay? And I tell you how that all came to be. I tell you who created the women's studies programs, who funded everything, who funded everything, right? So if, and how the CIA actually helped promote feminism and push it into the culture and into the mainstream, and they spawned the sexual revolution of the 60s. So that's what it's about. If you want the book, it's on Amazon. Um, you can contact me for a, a signed copy, but I'm waiting on a bunch more copies to come to me right now. It's been super slow getting them for some reason. So you might have to wait a bit, but you can order them through me if you want. Okay, let's check our super chats here and see if you guys have questions or if you want to tell me I'm wrong and I suck. Go ahead, feel free. I won't be mad. Uh, nobody important. You cannot give a female soldier a negative counseling without a danger of essay allegations. That's that's kind of what I was alluding to when I said, you know, when you put women in a male-dominated space, you put women in these male spaces, that's one of the things. And then you have to have this giant HR apparatus to deal with that. Everything becomes liability, insurance, everything costs more. Having women in these spaces, having women in corporations, in the military, and politics is actually extremely expensive. I should actually do a piece about this because I've looked at some of the data about how much it costs to insure against phony essay allegations, women getting hurt on the job, women getting hurt in training in the military. Women get hurt all the time in the military in basic training, even though they have lower standards. Our bone density, our joint structure, things like that are just not built for military life. And so women end up with all kinds of physical problems. It's very common. It happens all the time. And then you have, yeah, the the political and essay liability. So all these corporations, this is why you have to go through all of the um, sensitivity training stuff. It's not because they actually give a shit about it. It's because these insurance companies won't insure the corporation unless they're putting everybody through all this bullshit, be nice to Sally or you'll hurt her feelings training. Uh, don't look at Sally for more than five seconds or she'll accuse you of, you know, SA, that kind of thing. It actually makes things wildly expensive just so that Sally can go and work in a cubicle and feel good about herself that she did something with her life. It's baloney. It's silly. Okay, let's take a look at the dono chat. Did anybody send me any donuts? Ooh, I do have two donuts. Awesome. If you guys want to send me a dono chat, it is the link that is pinned at the top of the chat. I appreciate it very much. The first one is $50 from Steve Sandman. Hey, Steve. Uh, I think Steve sent me an email as well. Um, he said, I appreciate your content and have read your book. Since Andrew says your money is all his, I will donate here. LOL. I just started a podcast with Glenn Lawrence and would welcome your commentary. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. Um, I like Glenn. Glenn's always been super nice to me. Very good dude. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Just shoot me an email and we'll we'll collaborate schedules. <clears throat> and then I also have $30 from Heidi. And she says, stay fearless, Rachel. Blessings to you and your family. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, if you guys don't know, I do get a tremendous amount of hate. Tremendous. To the point that sometimes I do think to myself, whatever, I'll just let the whole damn thing burn down. What do I care? But I have four daughters and I'm hoping that, you know, maybe I'll have a couple dozen grandkids. <laughs> a couple dozen might be a lot. <laughs> it might be a lot to ask, but let's just say I get a dozen. If they have three on average each, that would be amazing. I have 12 grandkids. I care about the world that they're inheriting. I care about the world that they're going to live in. And as a Christian woman who does care about what's true and what's moral and 
what's good for the future of my family, I don't feel like I can just not say anything because then what happens? The only female voices that are out there is Jasmine Jafar and Farah and, you know, the OnlyFans girls on the whatever podcast. Like, am I really going to just fold and let them be the only women who talk? Now, if I've said this before, if I could log off forever and they would all log off, if that's what that meant, I would do it in a heartbeat. You'd never see me again. I would garden. I would write uh, for fun. I would work out. I would shoot guns. I would spend time with my family. I would make clothes, baby clothes for my grandkids. You'd never hear from me again. Okay. Because the whole like being online as a person is not my favorite part of this at all. If I could have done this anonymously, I would have 100%. But you can't make the arguments I'm making and say the things I'm saying anonymously and and impact people and change people's minds. You can't confront your accusers or your the people who disagree with you anonymously. You know what I mean? It just doesn't work. So I have to be on here. Now that means people are going to lie about me. They're going to say horrible things about me that are not true. Horrible things about my family that are not true. You guys have probably heard a lot of it. Don't if it sounds like bullshit it is, okay? In my Cake Gate video, I laid out my whole life, my whole history. So if you want to know about me, I'm pretty boring. But if you need to know about me, that's where you can go find out about me. Just know that if crazy people are saying insane sounding things about me online that don't sound right, it's because they're not right. Okay? I'll just leave it there. Because if you if you keep talking about it, they just keep going. And then it never ends. And that's all you get to talk about. So I'm not going to keep addressing it. But Yeah. It, the cost of this work I'm doing is extremely high. It's extremely high. It's been it's been a little tr- little tough at times, but whatever. I ain't no baby. Uh, Randy West sent me a dollar. Thank you so much, Randy West. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're about done. Uh, there's one. I have a question here. Let's see. What's this one? Can women still be staffers and aides or is that still clue too close? Well, I mean, women have always been in support roles. They've been in support roles in the military. You need like field nurses. You need women who do administrative tasks. You need, uh, you know, it's fine to have a secretary. It's fine. Women can do a lot of things. I'm actually not somebody who thinks, oh, women shouldn't be doctors. I think there are some women who are uniquely gifted to do certain things. And I think that's fine. I think when it comes to, I think the line I would draw is when they are usurping the authority of the male authority structure. That's what I don't like. Does that make sense? So like, I'm a, I'm a streamer. I'm a writer. Uh, I do debates, but I'm never going to try to make myself be like the boss around here over my husband. Um, I love theology. I like learning about theology. Um, someday when I'm an old lady, because it takes years to learn, it takes years and years to learn proper orthodox theology. Would I do apologetics in my old age? Sure, but only, only under the supervision and authority of my priest, my bishop, and at the um, submission of the male theologians around me. You know what I mean? Where we could have discussions and debate ideas or perspectives, but I'm never going to say, I have the authority over you. You need to listen to me and you need to do what I think needs to be done. That's that's where I think the issue comes. So women can do great things. I know women who are extremely gifted athletes in various women's sports. Uh, I know women who are extremely smart, have important jobs, uh, have accomplished insane, crazy, amazing things. I've had women that I do streams with, like Jamie Hanshaw, who is this beautiful, graceful, intelligent, wonderful lady who I adore. I look at her all the time and I'm like, she's just so cool. I just think she's so great. So there's a lot of women. Courtney, Courtney Turner, amazing lady, has overcome odds like nobody's business. Like she was born with several disabilities and expected to barely be able to take care of herself. And now she's an absolute powerhouse of a woman who's done incredible, crazy things. But she's not a feminist. She doesn't try to put herself in positions of authority of men and start bossing them around and telling them what to do. That's kind of what I mean. Does that make sense? Women should use their gifts. Women should push themselves. They should have goals. They should shoot for the moon and do what they can to be as valuable to everyone around them as they can be. I definitely believe in that. I just don't believe that you have to usurp 
the authority of the male hierarchy to do that. I don't think you need to run countries to do that. I don't think you need to be in charge of militaries to do that. I don't think you need to run corporations to do that. Now, if you have like a little company that you run or something, I think that's fine. Traditionally, women have owned like hotels, bars, restaurants, going back to like the time of Christ, there were female innkeepers and things like that. So women can do a million things, but they always want to do the only thing they're not allowed to do, which is be in charge of men. And that's that's where my problem is. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> um, do do do. It looks like that's it. I think that's it. I'll check the dono one more time just to be sure. Oh, Madison K also sent me five dollars. You guys have just been so generous this live stream, and I'm so thankful for you. That's just so nice, you guys. You guys are the best. Okay, yep, that's it on the dono chat. So I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. Um, make sure you head back over to the Crucible. I think tonight Andrew was planning on doing another stream. Last I heard, that was the plan. So go head over to the Crucible and see when Andrew's going to be streaming next. And I'm going to be doing a couple more fun things with a few people who've already been on my channel and some people who have not yet been on my channel. Might have a, a debate with Creatrix coming up. We were supposed to have one. So we will see if that pans out, um, we were going to debate like Christianity and feminism. So that would be a good one, I think. Um, yep. Buy the book. If you haven't gotten it yet, go to rwilson.substack.com. All the links are in the description box here. Um, and I also have a code. If you guys homeschool your kids, um, all you homeschoolers out there, if you need excellent classic curriculum, the stuff behind me right here, this is Mott Media's um, homeschool curriculum. It's classic. It's like pre-public school curriculum. It's amazing. Really good stuff. If you do want to save some money, you can use my code. It's Rachel15. And the link for that's also in the description box. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate all of you. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful night.